thank you for turning up again for number two. Yes, this is number two of my journey beyond. It's not scripted, as you are aware, yet it takes you to a part of my life, non-chronological. It shares with you the story that I broke and my experience journey with a spirit animal. So this one here is the quest beyond agreements, mindsets, even you could say the whole thing of personal development. Yes, there was a time when I took it beyond. So once upon a time, I tried to fix myself from the fears, from the failures, from what I thought that I wanted and I didn't get. And it was that time where I tried to control the fears within, my true voice, my true expression of my soul, and even my heart song. You can hear it wasn't always happy, and yet, what a beautiful journey to be on, to take this beyond. So today, let me tune you in with a little bit of flute, just to kind of set that scene of that journey into my mind, if you wish into success, into what I felt I needed to be and what I felt I needed to reprogram and control to get there. So let the flute talk to you and me. But also be aware of nature here being part. So I hope I set a little bit the scene into this particular journey and story. There were two events that were significant, apart of course from the animal that came a little bit later. There was a time when I lectured at university, one of my very, very best times. I did not really study what I lectured, but I embodied what I lectured. So it was a very, very fabulous time. And yes, you could call it success that my students really got the theories and whatever I was teaching. And more than theories, of course. And so I was married at the time to a psychologist. And we had amazing conversations. And I feel she saw me as a quite free spirit. Somebody who is in his truth, in his integrity, who really goes beyond. And there she was giving me a little test. And the test was something that she had created in her psychology. 
training and it was a box with four little boxes and she told me to draw inside these boxes four very important things to me and something very important happened that gave me an awakening on a very deep level so here is mr free spirit trying to squeeze in every little quadrant of this box whatever i wanted to express yes there was a heart and a sun and whatever but all squeezed in i did not dare to go beyond these limitations I did not dare to break the instruction that I was given. So this is very interesting. So here comes the non-follower actually still following. So you can imagine she was surprised, so was I. And it took me into another journey. At this time, I had already done quite a lot of self-development, mindsets and mantras and, and trying to improve myself to be who I thought I wanted to be. I had worked with crystals and healing. So I had trained myself, but also I had gone to many, many practitioners to fix myself. And yes, I believed it was about controlling the unconscious, the voice in my heart, my broken soul. And when I reached to that point of drawing into the, into the box and its quadrants, I still wasn't me. I still wasn't truly free. And I recognize that me is beyond that quadrant. Very soon after, the relationship broke during I took a shamanic training and we did a soul retrieval. And soul retrievals are really something very profound that, that take you surely way beyond. And in that soul retrieval that I later on did with many people, my clients, in the wound, so you go into the chambers of your soul, into the lower world, which is representing the unconscious. So the, the thing that I try to control. And so, and fix, by the way. And so, in that wound, I could see myself as a young Paco, a young shaman being trained. But in my tribe, it wasn't, a, it wasn't permitted for us to teach women. So something happened along the way where they broke that connectedness of the feminine and the masculine. But of course I was naughty and I started to teach, sharing with women. And of course we, we created much more than was possible only from the masculine perspective. So to just summarize it a little bit for you, I, I was caught, somebody reported me, and eventually I was taken out, executed and expelled into the jungle to live on my own. I was no longer allowed in my community. And it was interesting because regardless of others calling me back, I enjoyed that separation. I enjoyed that condemnation that the elders judged me for and sentenced me to. And so it seemed like I spent 129 lifetimes trying to return so in that soul retrieval when it's done in a group i mean first of all you go into another chamber of agreements and this is where i still didn't fix i still couldn't control i picked the agreements that didn't allow me to come back and really 
allow my community to evolve and bring the divine feminine back into the sacredness, into the divine, into the leadership. And I changed those contracts and I was really, really clear 21 days without a fail. I would use the opposite, the positive expression of my contracts that kept me in condemnation. And it didn't work. I did the contracts, I did everything, but it didn't work. What did work was the gifts that I received at the end. There's another part in between that's not so important right now. I received four L, five Ls, five gifts you get. And it was very interesting to figure them out. Of course, it was language learning, leadership that I rejected, of course, because I didn't want to take the leadership to allow my community to evolve. This is also very interesting. And then it was love, obviously, and light. And working with those without trying to fix or control, that had a much bigger impact. But regardless of having done this soul retrieval and trying to fix that self-inflicted condemnation in a way, because I did it to break free, to break out of the old paradigm, to bring my community back into harmony with the divine feminine. The changing mindset over 21 days still kept me in that fear. It didn't take me out. So I kept on searching. What was really the story to break behind? And it didn't happen overnight. It actually took me on many other journeys. The voice within did not stop. The noise of my soul to bring the broken pieces together that now I understand metaphorically is the kintsugi of the Japanese, the technique and the philosophy not in the same way as it was created in the 1500s, but in the context of here and now, I'm talking 2022. And so I still was lost in that. I still felt I didn't have the right to be me in the sense of being of service to to bring back harmony, to step out of separation, to step out of drama, I was still a victim. On this journey, of course, and of course teaching ethics helped as well, I learned how to step out of duality. I, I even studied um, transaction analysis and it still took time to step from drama to presence, but really that soul retrieval was the key. And of course, later on, I realized I needed to change the 21 days to change the mindset, because if the mindset is not connected and synced to the heart and the soul, the conscious, the unconscious and the superconscious, nothing changes. So that was also the time when I didn't do vision boards anymore or many of the self-development techniques that I had learned all along. And yet it was interesting what really broke the story from the condemnation into deliverance. And that was really when dragonfly came to me. So later on, the dragonfly came to me on many occasions. And once it also came, we were in Cartagena. This time I'm with Ceci already. 
and we are at a hotel and it's horrible and we just paid up and we couldn't want you didn't want to stay there and it was about money and got paid by credit card and you couldn't get the money back and all of that so i went within and i thought there must be some way and what came then was the dragonflies but not like one or two it was like a lot of dragonflies around. It was an antique place around a kind of watery fountainish place. And as they came, I knew there was a transformation coming. <laughs> and so when I went back to the reception, I saw that this hotel was a chain, had a chain of three hotels, and we were able to transfer to another. And this was the moment when the dragonfly started to play that role to truly deliver me from my own judgment and condemnation, holding myself back from my own mission for this ascension, for this awakening. It's not about Patrick, it's about who am I to be here? And so says he painted, of course, the dragonflies, and they became part of mystical bliss, the kind of energy that we used before Sankra's world. And so I could really feel what it was like to hang as this nymph on a tree. You may be familiar with the journey of the dragonfly, crawling around in the waters, having to learn to breathe, it's a quite interesting journey for four years. So this reflects a little bit my journey, trying to fix and trying to control. And then it has that dream and it actually climbs up a tree and hangs there totally, in a way, unprotected. Because it could be eaten very well too. But it knows it's not about survival and it knows that it's safe because it doesn't live in fear and it doesn't live in survival. And eventually what comes out is a dragonfly, totally different animal, with a vision incredible, can see beyond corners and all of that, my kind of thing. And also, of course, being able to fly very differently from many other flying animals. So that was one way out of this jungle of deliverance, of, of condemnation. And the second part was actually writing the story. And in the story, when I went into the deliverance, I actually came back home. And it's interesting, it was very clear after 129 lifetimes, I came back and I said, you know, guys, you can't condemn me, you can't judge me. Our tribe is here now to go the next step of evolution. We are here to bring the women, the divine feminine back into the sacred. We have been separated for too long and I'm not leaving. And this was the breaking of the story. This was the real shift. It was not what my mind wanted to fix. It was where my heart took me. So this is story two. Being conscious about the signs, but not getting stuck in techniques it's not about personal development. It's not about mindset, but it's about not getting stuck in trying to fix and control. The true healing is by breaking the story and finding another way to bring it all together. So here's my second story. Let me know how you feel about that. And let me know what it triggers in you. We are all unique. We're all on a different story. We are all on a different journey. And yet we have a lot in common. So share with me. If I can trigger your own stories to break, 
your own soul to find its way into wholeness. It serves all its purposes. So much love into your world and see you soon for number three.